AFS Artistic Director Richard Linkler. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, wow, how many of you have seen Sid and Nancy on film before in the theater? That's a lot. How many haven't? Even that's even better. How many are watching this for the first time on the big screen? And okay, this is awesome. It doesn't play a lot out. Ever we've all seen it on you know video. DVD, et cetera, but, uh, you know, cult film, but I've been looking forward to this all along. It was a tough choice, you know, Repo Man, this, or even the next year's Walker. You know, I was like, which Alex Cox to show to represent the 80s? And I picked this one just because sheer aesthetic. I wanted to see it uh, next, so it was a very selfish. So it's just the one I hadn't seen in a while, and I wanted to kind of go back to that moment. I remember um, being so damn excited, you know, Repo Man was just a revelation, you know, at the time. That was one of the best films, you know, of that of that time. And, yeah. and it was like, and then I remember hearing like, oh, his next film, he's doing, you know, Sid and Nancy. And I had to think back. I was a teenager when that when that all happened. You know, it was like such a sordid tale. You know, okay, he stabs his girlfriend at the Chelsea Hotel. ODs shortly thereafter. It was just one of those kind of, and then. You know, they had moved on. Johnny Rotten had his new group. And I thought they were sort of, I mean, it, it was such an incident. And, but it was, to me, it was sort of fading and it was becoming kind of more of a footnote. You know, and then this movie just brought back Sid and Nancy in such a big way. Or just, I kind of smiled when I heard about it. It's like, oh, cool. And the movie, you'll see, it's just like, it couldn't be more anti, like, Reagan, Thatcher, <laughs> 80s. <laughs> that, that he elevates these two, uh, you know, I mean, you couldn't get lower, I think, heroin junkies and hanging out in hotels killing each other, but more or less. <laughs> and to elevate them and find romance and humanity, it was just so fucking awesome to watch <laughs> at, that, that, at that time. And uh, it's just a wonderful movie. And we're going to be around. Like, there's a lot to talk about. You know, um, Alex Cox, this movie, his other movies. And I don't know, how many of you, did you see the Kurt Cobain documentary? last week, you know, check it out, HBO, it's, it's wonderful, Montage of Heck, and I was watching it having a revelation, I was like, oh, Courtney Love, I was like, gosh, she's kind of like, she's <laughs> thinking of this film coming up, she's his Nancy, I wonder, I was having some original thought, and then sure enough, she's like, she auditioned for Nancy, <laughs> and then she told Alex Cox, I am Nancy Sponge, and she didn't get Nancy, but she got like, look for her, and when, I haven't seen this since I knew who Courtney Love even was, but, um, She's like one of Nancy's junkie friends, you know, in New York. So you'll see a young Courtney Love in here somewhere. So <laughs> they called my favorite was they called Kurt and Courtney a more talented Sid and Nancy. So that's pretty good. Anyway, <laughs> so let's check this out. We'll be around after and let's have some fun. All right. I, th I think "Get Down Tonight" by Kissy the Sunshine Band was the best song in the whole piece. What about that? <laughs> so oh, wow, man. great seeing that movie. He's such a master. Yeah. He really is. And Gary Oldman and Chloe Webb were so fucking good. How would you I have made that? I mean, you know, it's funny, your mind, all the years later, I remember it as bigger. And even, like, when she kind of, the murder scene at the end, the death scene, I remember it as bigger, her running into that. It's, it's much more subtle than I remember. I was, yeah, it's masterful. They're so good. And they were unknown. No one knew who Gary Oldman was at this time. They were both kind of theater actors. I guess they'd known a little TV, but... Um, Wow! Imagine wow. making that movie. Imagine there couldn't have been two other people on earth who could have played those I know, roles. I know. There's such magic that that happened. Yeah, I heard Oldman wasn't even. You know, he's kind of a theater guy. He didn't really. He wasn't like part of that scene. But uh, man, you would never. What a great actor! It's just like the perfect yeah actor for the perfect for that role. Yeah, just I mean, come on. And the other thing it's is the sense. challenge when you when you have to like cast a. An actor as a musician is in yeah. most movies they have to like kind of be able to pretend to play an instrument. Yeah. It for Sid, it makes it pretty easy. Yeah, you just, <laughs> bass player. That's half the battle. And then, you know, yeah. I think you just insulted bass players for a second. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I remember Johnny Rotten being like at the time being a little tweaked out. Like, oh, that wasn't you know what I felt. But time is being very good to this. I just you know whatever a lot of people nitpicked. A lot of details, who people who were kind of there at the time, but uh, I don't know. I think Tom's being good to it. As the the spirit of it is winning out over exact details. I mean, that's my opinion. Who here was at the San Antonio show? And, you know, <laughs> all right, Gillies in Houston. I love that tour, Malcolm McLaren. They booked him into the 
like country bars. <laughs> they're, they're American. They're disastrous, <laughs> apocalyptic American tour. I just remember reading about it. You know, I was young, but I was like, "What? They're playing Gillies, the country?" <laughs> and just they, they were looking for the most antagonistic situation they could find. So right, they toured the South, <laughs> the right. Sex Pistols, looking like that, and they just wanted to just create as much havoc. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. Do you, do you, is that but, the Corpus Bridge? You see them going over at that point. What bridge is that? It's like a familiar-looking bridge. I don't know. I mean, they depicted the the um, two Texas shows in here, San Antonio and Houston, I think. Pasadena, I guess. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That 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 oh, movie yeah. is that, and the the tone. It's like there's so much that's funny in it. Funny. And, and there's so much that's just tragic yeah, and just it's the just spirit so of it. Yeah, up. it it you find sympathy for these junkies, and yet. Who here wants to now be a heroin junkie? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does not, glor- you know, I always think films are powerful. You want to be whatever, and it's like, ooh, no, no, ouch. Yeah, and yet you kind of feel for them at the end there. I'm just, oh, God, wait. It really goes in like a circle of hell when they're there. And yeah, by the way, the Chelsea Hotel is like this mausoleum they're in. It's just, oh, God. But they're like the Chelsea Hotel's policies are really forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I, I, yeah, you know that room's not there anymore. They got rid of it pretty quickly, knowing it would be this tourist attraction. Like if you ask for the Sid and Nancy room, they're like, no, no, it doesn't exist. They tore down some walls. They're always kind of moving the Chelsea Hotel around a little bit, you know. The rooms, and yeah, it's it's not there. So you're, but they let them film there. Years later, it's the same people running it, I think. So they let them shoot there. Well, they, I'm, I'm sure that Chelsea has like kind of a sort of ambivalent relationship with their notoriety. I'm sure they yeah. like it. Yeah, so yeah. Like it. yeah. Um, so you're filming a period movie right now. You're not filming anymore, but that movie yeah. that you're coming out with soon is a period 1980. movie. Like when you look at this, you can tell like he didn't replace like the signs in the background. He didn't change like fruit prices in the fruit market. Yeah, all that kind he, of stuff. Like, would you have to yeah, do all that stuff? I don't think that's his concern. I think Alex Cox is at some kind of impressionistic. You know, he's at some other level. That's why, you know, it's really beautiful. But I, yeah, I don't think that's his number one. If you, you don't know, care about concern. this stuff, it's gotta be kind of freeing as a filmmaker yeah. because you don't have to worry about oh, did I. 1978 car just drive by my 1977 scene. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, they're shooting this probably what in '85. Mm-hmm. It's set in what '77, '78, '79. You know, it's like, eh. You know, I don't know. It didn't doesn't really bother me. Yeah. Especially as, as more time goes by, I guess it did. You know, at the time though, I, I guess uh, like I was saying, I think it did kind of. Some people were trying to pick it apart a little bit, but I'm. I'm, I try to get everything exactly, you know, mm-hmm. it's more almost like a documentary trying to get it exactly how it might have been or was or, you know, whatever. But so like for your, like, me. if you have like a Lone Star neon sign in the background, it's got to be the Lone Star neon sign from 1980. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so that's a thing for you. Yeah, like it, gotta set that but, tone. So it impacts like the way that mm-hmm. you, you wouldn't feel honest about the film if you didn't get those details, honestly. Yeah, I think you just, period film, you want to strive for that because you're going to come up short. You know, you're going to get a letter from someone saying, oh, the, you know, the tap on the bear keg was two years later than, you you know, or something. You know, so it's like someone ever wanted their specialized knowledge, but. I would no. love to hear, no, no I have, one, knowing how Alex Cox is, I would love to yeah. hear somebody approach him with that kind of shit. Yeah, I, I assure you, he doesn't give a shit about that. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Alex, Alex punk, Cox right. heard about this screening. <laughs> and he said, and this is this tells you more about Alex Cox as his personality than anything else. But he said, yeah. "Why are they screening my worst movie?" And then two nights later, screening <laughs> Sergio Leone's worst movie. <laughs> that's punk rock, man. That's it. no, that's crazy. <laughs> and isn't it interesting in this movie that when you see punk rock, it, it, like, like when I think of punk rock now, it's like, oh, this this building impulse, you know? It's like destructive. And yet it's mm-hmm. this sort of creative impulse. I think of punk rockers that I know, many of them in this room, as people who build yeah. things. But there's this first flush of punk where you look at it and it's this incredibly destructive, nihilistic thing. Well, the London thing, yeah, yeah, it was. I think by the time it kind of filtered over here, it was becoming something something a little different. But yeah, that was I mean, probably as hardcore as it ever got. But I don't know. It wasn't there. Anybody here was? That's our. You want to? That's our great regret. You know, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Or I remember at the time just being kind of like I was so young, it didn't you know quite get it. It they 
we all come on to the punk rock thing in a different you know place. It took me you know it was slightly somewhere into the eighties where I went oh okay I get it, but um, at the time it was just kind of like what the fuck. You know? <laughs> so it was also like a few years later. For you me, had to be like, amused by it. You know it was cool, but it was just kind of like you just I just guess I didn't understand the political underpinnings mm -hmm. of you know and being young I didn't hate. Corporate rock the way they did, you know. It takes a little. You need like <laughs> yeah, but at some point you yeah yeah. You know, I'm going to those concerts, but what do I know? But yeah, you get a little older and you go, okay, yeah, <laughs> they're right. <laughs> but it was like for for most people by the time this came out, like in my little town in North Carolina, it's like this was like, where are the punks? I, I need to find the punks. Mm -hmm. And then like so, a movie like this came out and it hit. Every, you know, it didn't hit every small town. It, like, it, but it was yeah. open. It opened pretty wide. Yeah, yeah, it, it played. And so, like this, by 1985 or 86, or whatever this was, yeah. you know, this is punk was finally hitting, kind of, because it was like landing in people's towns. Repo Man had hit. We started. We we're starting to get Repo Man. On so video punk tape. was finally hitting Earth. You know. Yeah, finally. Almost landed. ten years later, it was, <laughs> which the culture was much slower back then for for young people. Oh, it's true. In 1983, like it, like yeah. guys were just becoming hippies. You know. I know. I know. It's, it's true. It's yeah. True. It really there was this incredible lag. Depending on, I'm from East Texas. And there is a ten. There's a decade lag time, still is, but uh, <laughs> if not forever lag time. Like right now, they're like beginning to like slip knot and stuff. Yeah, we're finally know. getting into the yeah. <laughs> um, Corns big. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's probably really true. Actually, <laughs> I wonder if we have any questions or contributions from our wonderful audience. Uh, yeah. Right back here, yeah. What's it? No, early film for him, I think. I know um, he had been shooting documentaries and stuff. So I think this is pretty early in his his career. You know, it got me thinking watching it. You know, it's like it's so it's kind of you know it's beautifully shot, appropriate, and in in film. You know, it's not like a punk rock. I think in the late seventies there was kind of a punk rock movie. If you look at kind of the New York, I think they never quite found a visual corollary. To punk rock music, you know, it's a it's a challenge. Film and music, you know, like jazz. Are there really good jazz movies? There's movies about jazz. This movie's about punk and that, but is the movie itself? It's it's too pretty. What would that look like? I don't know. I found myself thinking that because I don't really like a lot of those, you know, New York and I just think they're kind of ratty films that aren't that interesting and to me aren't cinematically that that interesting. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. A lot of those. Like Blank yeah. Generation. Yeah, a lot of those. I just find them kind of uninteresting cinematically. Mm -hmm. So I think Alex Cox, Cox, filmmaker first, cultural anthropologist or whatever, historian second. You know, film is is the number one agenda here, I think. Well, and too good. That's why 30 years later we're still talking about this movie because um, I think one of the impulses then, I don't know if Alex Cox was in the middle of the punk scene. Um, Johnny Rotten certainly accused him of not being, you know, he's from Oxford. You know, he's at school in Oxford. What does he know? You know, it's, didn't like his own portrayal in the movie so much. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah, it's like if we, that's like personal between them. I, I just think, you know, he, he, I heard there were... Um, Maybe Hollywood, there was rumors there were someone else who was going to do this film, like an American or even getting close to Hollywood. And I think they all got together and said, fuck that. <laughs> we're going to tell our own, that's our culture, that we're going to tell that story. So good for them. Yeah, and it's uh, like if you're watching a movie set in 1890, like a Western set in 1890, and there's like all kinds of, you know, details that aren't quite right for 1890, you know. You, you kind of get the general picture. You get maybe something, maybe yeah. some truth that's greater than the facts. Right, yeah. Especially, I think, if enough time goes by to, you know, there's kind of these, I think I've heard actors refer to directors as, when doing period films, as, as button counters. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, during that war, they only had seven buttons. You have six. We can't shoot today. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> you know, so it's just two different ways to approach it. Uh, right over here, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think that how accurate it is really matters. I mean, this this takes off on its own, right? It, it's just yeah. the starting point, you know, the story is just mm -hmm. the starting point, and then the film is, you know, 
uh, its own piece, right? Its own yeah, thing. I think that was the approach, and it's very successful, I think, on that. It was anybody really bothered that Johnny Rotten had a Liverpool accent? Yeah, he's <laughs> that actor's from, he's not from London, he's right. from Liverpool. <laughs> you know. Right over here, yeah. Um, I just want to make a couple of comments and ask a question. Actually, real, well, a couple of comments is, um, you said at the beginning that they talked about, uh, you, you talked about um, making him human, humanizing him, and like at the end of the movie, I'm just like, uh, you know, would she fucking die already, you know what I mean? I was like getting so like bogged down by it, it was so devastating. And then when he finally killed her, and he like hugged her, it was, re it was really, really uh, effective. And then he laid in bed with her, and I'm like, oh yeah, she's not gonna, and then I'm like, when's she gonna die? And then she ended up crawling in the bathroom and dying, and uh, it was like very, very sympathetic to his, uh, to his case. And then there was a couple yeah. of slow motion shots that were really effective too. And, I, 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 and slow motion is supposed to be like that, but it was just really cool when he walked through the door and then on the other scene. And in a third comment, I'm not from here, and I was in a, walked into a 7-Eleven at like uh, 12 midnight a few nights ago, and I got something at the counter, and the, the way the guy talked to me, I'm like, this guy talks just like the guy in fucking Days of Confused. And, that was, and it reminded me when the kid goes in and gets a sick pack. I'm, I'm from Massachusetts, I live in California. But anyway, so kudos to you on, uh, on that was a period of Well, I think David Blackwell's here tonight if you need to buy some underage alcohol. <laughs> I saw him earlier. Right, so. David, where are you? I saw you. <laughs> so. Okay, and the last question. Where there he is. Uh, does anyone know where, where he was shot? Where, where, where the last scene, the last shot was shot? Jersey City. Oh. Because uh, I've been, I've been to that location, or we theorized that was the location. I, I was spending a lot of time there, summer '88. I spent it up there. I was staying in Jersey City and couch surfing and <laughs> Lower East Side and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's right across. It. it it was still pretty, it looked about the same. It was only two years later. So yeah, right across the... That's really about the most depressing looking place. On yeah, it didn't yeah. look much better <laughs> three years later. Now I'm sure it's beautiful condos and, yeah. and everything. But uh, at that time, it was a beautiful rat hole, as was still a lot of New York. It caught the, it caught the end of that. Uh, beautiful um, rat holes. But yeah, beautiful slow motion. I think when he walks through the glass, it's very poetic. and. Uh, the trash, the famous trash can. That becomes the iconic image on the poster and all that. I heard, you know, legend has it, they just kind of, they were lit for something. It's like, hey, let's just, they just did that kind of spontaneously. That was just, oh, get up there and dump trash on them. And it's, shoot those, and it's those little things roll it, yeah, that make it, it, you know, it's like, you, you can't even, if those scenes weren't in the movie, the movie would still move, it would be fine, but it's really those little grace yeah. notes that make it a great movie. Yeah, it takes it to some other level. And I even like the end, I remember at the beginning thinking, oh, the cab ride, she's back. But I just find that very beautiful and touching now. You know, the end, the way it reunites them. And, you know, I mean, that's complete hypothetical the actual death scene. I don't think anyone ever knows. Will ever know or knew what went on between them there. And, you know, I just, they just made a choice. You know, to, you know, who, who the hell knows? How do you get bail so easily, though? You murder? You get bail? Like, just, wow. You kill someone, you're just out. Like, here's your cigarettes. And you're, and you're like, okay. <laughs> I can go OD now. Right over here. Very first time they play? In the film. The first time they yeah. play in the film. No, I don't think they. I'm wondering if it was a tribute to the film. Because it happens later. Oh, no. The, the way movies, maybe the way the movie's made is you get, send your costume designer out to go look at the principles and figure out what they would have wore. And maybe that's, you know, at the time that PIL video is something that that costume designer might have been able to find as a reference. I'll throw that or out the as actor a theory. Said, or the actor just said, hey, I want that, that costume. Or they shot all that the same day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be all those things. But um, I think I, someone probably said, as the clock was ticking, like anyone who notices that, you know, 
makes that connection. We have to see the film a few times. And we won't care. Where do we go? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. This reminds me a lot of that Star 80 movie that you showed last time. Really? Yeah. I, I, like, I thought uh, thematically it was kind of similar and it was kind of uh, sad, oppressively sad. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but w was this successful? Because I remember you saying that Star 80 just kind of like ruined Bob Fosse's career, you know? It's now yeah. Like people weren't ready to for that level of real of depression. sadness. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder how this fared. I don't know. This one had a... <coughs> Does anyone remember? I remember just being exhilarated by this, and all my film friends, it was kind of a triumph. I mean, it was such a, I don't know, it was depicting an earlier time, it was a different thing. I don't know, I didn't find it. I felt that it, it really developed a following because it was one of the video yeah. movies that, uh, ones that I could see on video. Yeah, earlier it on. caught that era. And it, it actually, you know, caught on more as a rental, I think. Right. I think it did, it did okay box office for kind of an indie distribution. It probably opened in like 300, probably had 300 prints yeah. of it out there, you know. It wasn't like a huge movie. It was, but it was it in the open wide probably era. about as well as Repo Man. You know, like, that was pretty good for the time. It, it got out there. Everybody was talking about Gary Oldman when the film came out. Yeah. This was the one, so... It was like, who's this guy? So the film kind of got connected immediately mm -hmm. with his... And he was immediately, his career, he was in yeah. Prick Up Your Ears the very next year, and, you know, yeah. ever since. So the Oscars are bullshit, which everybody know. I mean, I'm, I think we all agree. I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I think we all agree. <laughs> <laughs> the Oscars are bullshit. <laughs> no, it's not, not even about any of that. But, but like... Who was better? Pretty boring. Who was better that year than Gary Oldman in this yeah, movie? Yeah, how could you be better? Or Chloe. Yeah, again, Chloe, Webb. Chloe Webb. That is such a fucking great performance. I, I, want to I want to know who won. She is so good. Yeah. I mean, he's great too, but gosh, she really blew me away. Um, you know, the rumor has it that I think Daniel Day Lewis was up for the part. Yeah? Of, of Sid. Like, he kind of wanted to play that part or something. He Could wanted you to imagine? You're Alex Cox, so okay, what like, do I do? Yeah, Daniel, I mean, at that time, he's in My Beautiful Laundrette. You know, he's, yeah, he's, he's in all those movies in that era. Daniel in the 80s is a pretty interesting you know, phase of his career, but I just couldn't see him. I mean, it just seems impossible. Well, uh, we, got, uh, we got another late night coming up. So, Greg, I think we'll have to hang on for that, hang on to that. We got another late night coming up on Wednesday night. So, uh, that's, yeah. that's uh, Sergio try, Leone. Try to make it to that. That'll be great to just settle in and watch such an ambitious <laughs> masterpiece. We need that in this series. Like I said last week, we need an epic attempt. They weren't doing that. It was kind of the last one. The 80s, it was dying. It was over. It's the last one. Mm -hmm. They let them do. Yeah, this is this is a big, huge, epic in scope film by a by great a master, master who, filmmaker. You know, it's his last. It was uh, out of Africa and William Hurt that year. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like there's a lot of really good. Yeah, that's how you was going. Yeah, I hate to be a button counter, but that would have been for the '85 film. Oh. For the '86 films, it was Paul Newman. It colored my oh, so the, the awards would have been in 87. Yeah. Yeah. Like whatever the year is, the year before or so. Uh, so it's a career Oscar, you know? <laughs> hey, uh, I swear by color of money. I love that movie, yeah. and I think Paul Newman's That great would be in the series if yeah. Disney had a print of it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Newman, yeah, he, he deserves it. The first time I saw it, I wanted her stabbed a lot earlier. Yeah, I remember she irritated. I remember reading reviews at the time. It's that whiny, high-pitched voice. How many times can she say Sid? You know, like, ah. She kind of graded on people, but I, I just think she's so. It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, I I get you, but like, I, at the same time as you're being annoyed by it, you're just also like, wow, this is like the, the character. This character will live with me in my brain forever. It's such a memorable character. Yeah. Wow. But but to to uh, to kind of wrap it up because we're we're yeah. all going to go out there we're and we're going, to, we're going to slam dance. <laughs> is the um, is and I got so excited seeing the River's Edge trailer. That's a great, you know, hats off to who, who cut that. Who cut that trailer? Oh, that guy cut that trailer. <laughs> I'll tell you, Ryan Dyke cut that trailer. It's not too late. If they ever re-release that movie, if they use that trailer, they'll have a, it'll do a lot better. <laughs> Enjoy this kid. Anyway, um, yeah, River's Edge is one of the great teen movies of all time. So check out. And the rest of the series, it's all good.
Yeah, and then the summer, and then uh, Mishima. Yeah. Paul Schrader. Oh, my God. This, anyway. this is going to be great. So uh, thank you all for seeing being here. See you in a couple nights, I hope. Yeah, see you in two nights. Be Leon. Come here for that. And thank you so much, Rick, again for this. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being here.